For decades, Palestinians have been deprived from the right of telling their own story of what really happened to them. For decades, the Israeli narrative dominated the world media. And for decades, nobody knew really what was happening in Palestine. This is our story, a story of Palestinian people who have been aspiring since the beginning of the previous century to freedom, liberty, justice, peace, and equality. This is a story of what really happened in Palestine. Back in the beginning of the 20th century, Palestinians were struggling to have independence and freedom. They were hoping to have a state that is democratic, where Palestinians and Jewish people would live side by side in equality and with equal democratic rights. But we were told by the international community that this could not be the solution. And the same international community decided in 1947 to create the two-state solution. Contrary to what many people think, the two-state solution is not new. It goes back to 1947 when the United Nations General Assembly decided to divide Palestine into two states. One state in the white area would become Israel with almost 55% of the land and the Palestinian state in the green area with about 45% of the land. From a Palestinian state that could be sovereign, contiguous and viable into nothing but clusters of pantostans, ghettos that can never form a real state. So this is the real story of the Palestinians. A state that was reduced from 45% in 1947 to 22% in 1967, which Palestinians accepted to have as a state, to less than 18%, which was offered by Barak, and now down to 11% of separated areas that become like ghettos and pantostans. This did not happen as an accident. It happened according to a plan, and that plan was developed by Gal Alon, the foreign minister of Israel, in 1967. He developed a plan to deal with the fact that after the occupation of the West Bank and Gaza and Jerusalem, the Palestinians never left. They did not repeat what happened in 1948 when 800,000 Palestinians out of one million who were living at the land at that time were forced to leave their country. This time Palestinians decided we will die in our land and never leave. And that created the so-called the demographic problem. Three checkpoints that stop and prevent freedom of movement in Palestinian territories. We have put on the map only half of the checkpoints because if we put them all, you will see a completely red map. These checkpoints destroyed the contiguity of geography, destroyed social systems, destroyed health and educational systems. For example, a person who would travel from Jenin to Ramallah would usually need an hour and 20 minutes to get there. Because of the checkpoints, this distance could take about seven hours and sometimes more. These checkpoints were part of a system which was later completed with the development of the apartheid wall. A wall that was built in the north, in the center, and in the south. And in 85% of the time, this wall was built not on the borders between West Bank and Israel, but it was built inside the West Bank to annex as much as possible of the Palestinian land and creating separation not between of the water resources of the West Bank and allows Palestinian citizens to use no more than 50 cubic meters per capita per year, while it allows illegal Israeli settlers to use more than 2,400 cubic meters of water per year, 42 times more than the Palestinians. The Israeli GDP per capita averages around $26,000 per year. 
while the GDP per capita in Palestine is no more than $1,000. Yet, we are obliged, because of imposed market union and tax union, to pay the same prices for goods as Israelis do. More than that, we are obliged to buy our water and electricity from Israel. And we have to pay double the price that Israeli citizens pay. Palestinians have to pay 5 shekels per unit of water while Israelis pay 2.4. They have to pay 13 shekels per unit of electricity while Israelis pay 6.3. And on top of that, Israel has initiated a system of road segregation. Most of the main roads in the West Bank are exclusive for Israeli settlers or Israeli army. I, like many Palestinians, would be sentenced to six months in jail if we are caught walking or driving on these main roads in the West Bank. There hasn't been ever any similar case in human history where roads would be segregated. Even the, in the, during the worst time of segregation in the United States or during the worst time of apartheid in South Africa, they can wait for hours. They would be indignified. They would be humiliated by the Israeli army. Sometimes they could be beaten. And they have to go through this suffering day after day because there is no other way. For 18 years, Palestinians have been negotiating with the Israelis. And the outcome was only more land confiscation house demolitions, land appropriation, and the consolidation of an apartheid system. Since 2000, Israel has demolished 86,000 Palestinian houses. Since 2002, Israel has uprooted more than one million and a half trees, mainly olive trees, to build the wall. Since 1967, the Israeli army has arrested 650,000 Palestinians. Practically, every second male adult in Palestine has been to jail. We call it digital occupation, where Israel controls the situation by looking just at the screens and looking at the photos that are taken by their planes that scan the city. In the beginning of 2009, Israel initiated one of the worst wars in the history of the Middle East. It was practically one-sided unilateral war. Israel used during the last war in Gaza were civilians. This is the image of five sisters from Baalusha family. One was Jawahir, four years old. One was Dina, eight years old. One was Samar, 12 years old. One was Ikram, 14 years old. And one was Tahrir, 17 years old. All the five sisters were killed in one shot when a bomb hit their house in Gaza. You can imagine what happened to Samira, their mother, when she found out that she lost five of her daughters in one shot, in one hit. 
similar stories exist. We know a story of another father who was caught under Israeli fire. His two sons were shot. He called for help. We believe in a strategy. We believe that the only strategy that would get us out of this mess is to combine nonviolent, peaceful resistance with international solidarity with Palestinian people, including boycott, divestment, sanctions activities, like has happened in the case of the apartheid system in South Africa. Without international solidarity, Palestinian nonviolent struggle alone cannot succeed. And I say, whether in two states or in one state, what we are asking for is our human rights, our dignity, our freedom and liberty. It is Israel that is having the choice. If they continue to destroy the potential of a two-state solution, we might be about to cross or have just crossed that critical point of irreversibility, then the only option left would be one state with equal rights for everybody. But one thing I know very well, that we the Palestinians will never ever accept to be slaves of occupation or apartheid. We will struggle for our freedom we will struggle for liberty. We will struggle for our independence. We will struggle for the same rights that all the people of the world have already gotten. And we will never give up till we achieve that freedom. Nelson Mandela said once, when South African apartheid system was abolished, he said, we will never be completely free till Palestinians are also free. He also said that the most important human rights issue of today is the issue of the liberty and freedom of Palestinians. Like Martin Luther King, like Gandhi, and like Nelson Mandela, we believe that our struggle eventually will succeed and we will overcome. And that will be a very happy day, not only for Palestinians, but also for Israelis, who cannot be proud of creating the worst system of apartheid in the 21st century. It will be a very happy day for all the people of the world. The Palestinian National Initiative believes in Palestinian freedom, believes in nonviolence, believes in Palestinian democracy, and believes in international solidarity.